This section of the tutorial is for the Linear Features tool in Planet Mappers. You'll start with an image here of Mercury's surface where a sun marker has been placed indicating the direction from which the sun is shining. You will use this to help identify your surface features. To start, click the Linear Features button. To see what any of these buttons here do, double-click the button and a description will show up. Click back to return. Once you've clicked the Linear Features button, it will give you some choices. Do you want to mark a linear feature, such as a crack or a fault? Do you want to mark a crater chain? Or is there something else weird in the image and unknown? We're going to start by doing a linear feature and click continue to start. And I'd like to mark this kind of zigzag crack here. We'll start with that one. Do note that as you mouse over the image, the section under your cursor will be zoomed in at the top right or the top left, and it moves out of your way when you move your cursor towards it. Okay, so let's get started with this linear feature. I'm going to click once to start a line segment, move the cursor to the end of that line segment, and click again. Another dot will anchor it in place. Now it'll continue drawing line segments as much as I want and I'm going to hit each inflection point of that line. When I'm done and I don't want to make any more line segments, I can end it by either hitting the escape key on my keyboard or by mousing off the image. To delete a marking, you double click one of the blue circles, but note that that deletes the entire set of line segments attached to that point. You can also use the delete marking tool here to remove the lines. You can't change a line segment once it's been placed, so if you want to redo it, you need to delete it and start over. I'm going to put this one back and hit Escape. And let's repeat this with an example of a crater chain. So there's a chain of craters right down here that I'd like to mark. Again, you click Linear Features, choose the Crater Chain option, and click Continue. I'm going to put a dot at one end, it's kind of at the end of the image here, and then mark the other end. When I'm done, hit Escape to finish. If the individual craters within the crater chain are large enough, you'll also want to mark them with the Mark Craters tool, which we talk about in the next section. Now, many of these images from the Messenger spacecraft have dark areas around the edges where there's no data. Don't worry about that, it's not a problem. Just mark whatever you see in the part that has data. For example images of all the features you may see in your mapping, please look at our feature guide at the top menu under Tutorials, Feature Guide. You may want to open that up in a new tab and keep it handy while you're marking. Continue watching the next section for instructions on using the Mark Craters and Mark Features tools. If you're already familiar with those tools from our other projects, then go ahead and get started. This section of the tutorial is on the Mark Craters and Mark Features buttons in CosmoQuest Mapper projects. I will be using Moon Mappers as an example, but this method works the same for all of the Mappers projects. Uh, to start, you want to click on the Mark Craters button, make sure that's selected. So let's pick a nice sharp crater to start with. You want to identify the rim or edge of the entire crater. Now pay attention to where the sun is. In this image, it's coming from the right, which is where that sun icon is. This means going right to left across the crater. The, okay, this means that going right to left, the rim leading up to the crater, so right here, just barely see it, is a little brighter. And then you transition to darkness as you go into the crater due to the rim casting a shadow. And then it gets light again as you get the wall that's facing the sun. And as you exit that sharp crater, you get another shadow as the rim casts a shadow on the outside. So that's uh, what your crater looks like. That's one way to identify a sharp crater using the sunlight. So to mark it, you need to click, figure out where the center of the crater is, and this is where the zoom tool comes in handy. Click and drag your cursor 
until the size of that circle matches the rim of the crater. Just like that. Let go of the mouse and uh, check your marking. If the circle stayed red when it hit the crater, so if I tried it on this one, if you're on the rim of the crater and the circle stays red, it'll disappear. That means that it, the crater is too small. It's smaller than 18 pixels across and we don't want anything that small. Once it's big enough to turn green, then you're okay. Now don't try and overestimate the size of your crater just to make it turn green. Get as close to the rim or the edge of the crater as you can. Uh, one way to describe the crater rim, so I'm going to delete this for a second. One way to describe the crater rim is that it's the edge of that dark area on one side and the light area on the other side of the crater. And that again works best on newer, sharper craters. So I'm going to make that touch where the shadow and light end and begin. If you want to change your marking, you just click and drag from the center to move it around your image. Uh, you can also click and drag on the rim to resize it, make it bigger or smaller. Click off the circle to return to normal and mark your next, your next feature. To delete it, you can either double click the circle or you can use the delete marking tool on the side to delete. Let's go back to the mark creator tool and actually keep that one there. Try and get it close to perfect as possible. So now again, pay attention to the shadow and sunlight as you're looking for more craters. Here's the same pattern of shadow to sunlight across the crater as our first one. So we'll mark this one. You want to look for sharp craters such as these, as well as craters that are more faded or harder to see. Uh, a good example in this picture is this circular depression that I'm circling right here. So here's the center of it. Again, you have that pattern of dark to light across the depression, which tells us that this is probably a very old eroded crater. So we have to estimate the center of it as well as the rim of this crater. And again, I'm going to use where it transitions from light to shadow as my guide for where the crater rim is. So let's try and mark this very old eroded crater. Let's say right about there. Now we also want you to mark any other interesting features that you see in the image as well using the mark feature tool. So you click on that to get started and I see something over here that looks a bit strange. It's light on this side and dark on the other side which makes me think it's something that's sticking up off the surface and so that's not a crater that's something else. So I'm going to click it to drop the marker and it'll ask me what are you looking for? What, what do you think it is? It could be a light albedo feature, where albedo is, is the brightness of, of the surface. A dark albedo feature, so a dark colored piece of surface. Boulder field, so something that's rock, something that's sticking up could be a boulder field. A bullseye or concentric crater. Uh, a chain of craters or unknown, something really weird you're not sure what to describe, how to describe it. Um, since there's a couple of these little protrusions, I'm going to go with boulder field. Looks like we've got a few boulders and hit continue to keep the mark. Now we can also move this marking around if I want to by clicking and dragging on it. And this also gives you a little tag reminding you of what you called it, what you clicked it as. You can delete it with a double click as before or with the delete marking tool as before. I'm going to go ahead and Leave that one there and mark some of these other boulders. You can change the category of feature by triple clicking. So quickly clicking it three times, it lets you uh, change what object it is. 
but notice that it also moves the marking just a little bit. So once you've hit continue, you want to make sure to move your marking back on top of whatever it was you saw. So now uh, I'm going to go back to the Mark Crater tool and mark as many of these large circular features as I can find. Okay, so I think I've taken my time and found all the craters above 18 pixels uh, that I can easily identify. Um, before you finish up, you want to see if the image has any of these things, linear features, anything odd, or if you get to an image and it's just a bad image, uh, click bad image and, and move on. I don't think there are any of these unusual features uh, in this image, so I won't be clicking any of those. If you want to temporarily remove the markings uh, to see the original image underneath, you click Turn Markings Off, see if you missed anything. Uh, don't worry, your work is still saved, just click Turn Markings On to bring them back. When you're done, you want to click Done Working, and that will submit your image to the database, uh, submit all your markings, and bring you a new image. one. Do note that as you mouse over the image, the section under your cursor will be zoomed in at the top right or the top left, and it moves out of your way when you move your cursor towards it. Okay, so let's get started with this linear feature. I'm going to click once to start a line segment, move the cursor to the end of that line segment, and click again. Another dot will anchor it in place of line segments attached to that point. You can also use the Delete Marking tool here to remove the lines. You can't change a line segment once it's been placed, so if you want to redo it, you need to delete it and start over. I'm going to put this one back and hit Escape. And let's repeat this with an example of a crater chain. So there's a chain of craters right down here that I'd like to mark. Click back to return. Once you've clicked the Linear Features button, it will give you some choices. Do you want to mark a linear feature, such as a crack or a fault? Do you want to mark a crater chain? Or is there something else weird in the image and unknown? We're going to start by doing a linear feature and click Continue to start. And I'd like to mark this kind of zigzag crack here. We'll start with that. This section of the tutorial is for the Linear Features tool in Planet Mappers. You'll start with an image here of Mercury's surface where a sun marker has been placed indicating the direction from which the sun is shining. You will use this to help identify your surface features. To start, click the Linear Features button. To see what any of these buttons here do, double click the button and a description will show up. Now it'll continue drawing line segments as much as I want and I'm going to hit each inflection point of that line. When I'm done and I don't want to make any more line segments, I can end it by either hitting the escape key on my keyboard or by mousing off the image. To delete a marking, you double click one of the blue circles, but note that that deletes the entire set 